recently you stated on Twitter that you tested positive for COVID-19. And I think that it would be informative for people to kind of know what you experienced, uh, how you were able to get a test, maybe how you think you came into contact with the virus. Can you just talk through that? Honestly, to this day, I don't even know how I got a test. I, I randomly, uh, my girlfriend's friend mentioned this doctor's office. Uh, it, it, oh, one medical, excuse me. They're not paying me, uh, <laughs> which I guess does, has an app and does like virtual appointments too. So I was doing virtual points, appointments with, the, with them and then my cough got so severe with the fever, I decided to go to the office and they had a test. So I guess I, I, I don't, maybe I lucked out. So uh, that's how I knew I had it. They actually did say that there's a lot of false negatives too. So a lot of people are being told they're negative and the tests are not foolproof. Um, honestly, I think for me, it was uh, amp maybe made worse because when you have something like this, the, th the suggestion is rest. And I was like in the home stretch of finishing this Vice story. So like I was working 14 hours a day. Uh, it's, it's stressful. That's not good if you have a virus. So I think, I mean, my cough, luckily I haven't been coughing during this interview, but it, it kind of like, I think it's gone and then it comes back. It, it, this has been going on for like a month. Uh, but the best way to describe it is just, uh, in my case, severe cough that was hurting my back, uh, was hurting my ribs a little bit because you're coughing nonstop. At one point I was coughing nonstop for at least nine days. Um, and the fever fortunately went away after three or four days, never went higher than 101. I didn't have any breathing problems. Uh, but I think people should realize like the mi even the mild version, some of these like idiots uh, on Twitter are like, oh, it's just a cold. I've never had a cold this bad. I mean, it was not just a cold. And frankly, I'm lucky because the people in my situation that weren't, didn't have the breathing problems, didn't have the hospitalizations, like who knows what makes it go that direction, you know, versus another, because there's people healthier than me that have died. So there's people like super athletic. I don't really exercise that much uh, who died. So it, it really, it, it's it, the jury's out on how certain people respond. Uh, for me, uh, I'm just guessing, but I think I got it from a supermarket because uh, I was wearing a mask. We were wearing gloves, but in, you know, New York city is very dense. You could try to stay six feet from people, but New York City, people are just, you know, I've always said there needs to be walking lanes because everybody's just in their own world, walking in the middle of the curb and not mm -hmm. really, you know, bumping into you. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure I probably got it that way, which tells you, you can get this even wearing a mask, gloves. Um, you know, I think the experts even, like first it was six feet, then they said, well, it might need to be more. Then they said, oh, well, it, you could get it just if you walk past someone that breathed <laughs> like so i don't really know how i got it but i got it i'm lucky uh, you know privileged in a way i work from home when i'm not traveling i you know there's amazon workers that i've spoken to that think they have it but are going in anyway because they can't afford not to get paid that's another scandal that yeah. they don't have paid sick leave unless you test positive um yeah but it's, it's not been pleasant uh it's been going on i thought i was better uh but I'm starting to cough again. I'm, 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 I would hope I'm out of the woods for anything more serious. Uh, and it's also, I mean, just to be honest with you, it's, it's affected the business a little bit because I haven't really been going live or doing videos that often. Uh, I actually, to tell you the truth, got worse because the day I broke the Vice story, I, I went live because it's like, I'm not, you know, I want my audience to know about this and so we want to play this up. But I was still like deeply sick. So I, just going live for an hour took a hell of a lot out, out of me. I mean, my girlfriend even said, like, it's like you just ran like a marathon. So uh, this thing is exhausting. And I really am very, very uh, dismayed to see all these morons, governors and, you know, oh, we're going to reopen the economy slow by slow. Like as we pass the death toll of the Vietnam War, um, I know people are going crazy cabin fever, but I don't understand, uh, maybe you have an answer, you can't contact trace in New York City. You can't contact trace in these major cities. How the hell do you know who passed me on the way to the supermarket or who, who was in the supermarket with me? It's just asinine. So uh, I don't know what the answer is, but I don't think the answer is reopening these gyms and hair salons and all that uh, because you might be willing to take the r risk, but that's not fair to other people who are not willing to get infected by you.
Yeah, absolutely. It's something that if we just all hunker down for a couple of months and wait until this blows over, that's the best case scenario. Because I, I think that, you know, staying inside, getting cabin fever, that's a better outcome than getting the virus. Um, I wanted to ask you, when you started to experience symptoms, was this like something that was gradual? Like, did you feel a tickle in your throat? Um, and then did it kind of build or did you just wake up one day with like a huge, like horrible cough? Because I have a friend who just tested positive. She's in healthcare. So this isn't super surprising, but it's just, you know, the way she describes it is it, this is horrible. There's no energy. Um, you know, you don't, you don't want to get out of bed. You just sleep. Um, so how did this happen for you? Was it sudden or was it gradual? I started coughing a little bit on a set on Saturday, uh, like weeks ago. Sunday, the cough became severe, and then Monday, I had a fever. So it was pretty quick. I mean, mild cough, next day, severe cough, then fever. I didn't have it as bad as your friend, fortunately. I could get out of bed. I wasn't, like, super, super exhausted. Um, but I think the worst part, your, your body, you get fatigued from coughing nonstop for seven days. So I was just exhausted from the coughing. Uh, and mentally, I'll be honest with you, again, like, just people dying, so I'm not complaining. But mentally, it does take a toll on you because at least when I didn't know I had this, you know, it's it's said like you can go outside to take a walk if you're keeping distance, you know. So at least you get that like 20 minute, half hour break from being stationary. You know, I live in a one bedroom apartment, so when you're qu literally quarantined for, I was in here for two straight weeks, it, you get a little kooky. I mean, yeah. I, I was getting a little kooky uh, because it's just c tough to be confined in that area. Again, like people are dying or hospitalized, so I don't have it. You know, I'm not complaining, but that was uh, one component. And uh, the other thing I'll just say is I think that um, it's really a shame that in this situation, uh, the media is ignored. It's, it's kind of like with school shootings. They're doing the play by play instead of talking about the root. I don't see the media talking about like. There is zero discussion in the media, corporate media. Why are wh why are we even paying rent right now? Right. Why are we paying rent? Why why are we paying mortgages? I mean, you look at Europe. The, the government's either paying for like eighty to ninety percent of people's pay uh, companies' payrolls, or in some cases, just like you know, mortgage paused, uh, rent paused. Not like paused and then you pay it all back in one lump sum. Just like erased for now. And your landlords' mortgages, so they don't, they don't suffer. Like, the fact that corporations run our government, and I've said to my audience, like, it doesn't matter if Biden or Trump wins, because, I mean, I think Trump's a little worse, but the bottom line is neither of them make the decisions. It's, it's their donors that are making the decisions. But there's no, like, deep discussion about why is it that in the United States of America, when something like this happens, why are 20 million people now out of work and no health care? Like it's mentioned, but there's no that is a disaster and it could be fixed like right now. And it's a scandal that the Democratic frontrunner is not saying, yes, right now, Medicare for all. We'll talk about it. You know, I disagree with it permanently. But right now, Medicare should just pay for all of this. Uh, it, it's completely scandalous. And the future is bleak. I'm going to talk to Richard Wolf uh, later this week, but it's going to be like 2008, Mike. I mean, these companies are not hiring back all these workers when times are good. They'll do more with less. So you're going to have, you know, talk about Andrew Yang. The jobless economy is going to be expedited quicker. A lot of these people are not going to get employed back, uh, not to mention opioid epidemic getting worse because of dep unemployment, depression, uh, suicides, those kind of things. And there's very little talk of it. And, you know, I love Bernie, but he has not organized his army to they can't protest in, in physical space now, but he has not organized his army to demand these things. Uh, now is the time. Uh, I don't agree with some that are going off the rails and Bernie's a sellout and a coward. I don't agree with that. But now is the time to just say straight up, like, no, we're not paying our rent. This is absurd. We, we don't have jobs. Like, it's crazy. Um, so I think there's a broader discussion than just the health pandemic. And uh, I, I hope also, I mean, look, there, there's a reason that African-Americans are, are being hit disproportionately, uh, downtrodden communities. So I hope that uh, these parts of the discussion enter uh, into it. But, yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm going to be fine. And uh, hopefully nobody else gets this. It's not pleasant. Yeah, well, we're glad to hear that you're doing OK. I think that, like, 
hearing you say that you tested positive for a lot of people like this makes it really real if you don't know someone who's had this um i've known a couple of people now who has had this but if you don't then like hearing from someone who comes out and says it i think it really makes it real and i think it it's important because it encourages people to actually be more responsible because you hear about these stories in the news we're overwhelmed every single day but it doesn't seem like a real thing unless you actually put a face to it and like having you come out and say it i think there's a real utility in that and you know just letting people know that this is serious and you need to take it serious you know thankfully you're okay it could have been worse for you but it's still it's no walk in the park you know so so um, yeah. thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that.